Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today, I want to answer a few questions that came, uh, that arose when uh, a portion of a private video I had made for a sister in Christ was, was shared on the Word Prophet YouTube channel. So, those of you who are familiar with this channel know that as a Christian woman, I go to Brother Clinton at the Word Prophet YouTube channel for guidance and counsel for oversight. Being a woman, that is necessary. So what I want to answer here are a few questions that arose when I spoke about um, how the head covering, if we don't cover all of our hair, it actually makes our hair more enticing and it makes us susceptible to attack. Now, I have many videos on that topic, and that's not the topic that I'm addressing in this video. I will put a link for the playlist about modesty in the description box below, and there are many, many areas about Christian women and, and how we dress and conduct ourselves on that playlist. So, I, I would ask you, if you're curious about these matters, that you go to that playlist and go through it and see if there's anything that would address concerns that you have about modesty. So let me begin by saying this is a Christian YouTube channel. It's for women who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ or women who want to know how to serve Jesus Christ according to the Holy Scripture. So to be a Christian, that means we're, that we're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins and we're filled with the Holy Ghost. And thereafter, we walk in holiness. Someone who has not done this is not going to be able to walk in holiness. So, of course, that is step one. Covering your head is not salvation. Salvation is found when the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to your life by being baptized in his name and receiving his Holy Spirit to come inside of you and then give you the power to overcome your flesh. Now, matters of modesty have to do with our flesh. And we as Christian women have all been born into a system where we've been deceived about modesty. And there are many ways that has happened. So the video that was posted last evening by Brother Clinton spoke about, in particular, that when a woman does not cover all of her hair, it's not modest. And I likened that unto two things. One of them being that it's like showing cleavage. And so when we're a Christian woman, we dress modestly. We don't show cleavage. It, I also likened it unto wearing a high-heeled shoe with straps around the ankle and so forth. And one of the questions that arose, so I'm going to attempt to answer all of the questions that arose. Uh, the first one that arose was that... Uh, I seem to have contradicted myself when I was speaking about a woman wearing uh, high-heeled sandals. And verily, I understand why that question came up, because what I said was, I said, I described the wearing of a high-heeled shoe that uh, has a strap around the ankle and around the foot, that it makes a woman's foot more sexually attractive. And then I said, but I'm not saying a woman can never wear sandals. So I do understand why there's some confusion there, and I thought to clear it up. There is a world of difference be between the sort of high-heeled sandal that pole dancers wear and a sandal that a Christian woman might wear who's in a hot climate. So I got a lot of questions about sandals, about shoes, and so forth. Therefore, I thought to answer some of those concerns. Christian women are commanded in the scripture to dress in, dress in modest apparel. And this is written in 1 Timothy chapter 2. So let's go there. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. So 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let's read here, begin in verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but 
which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So the modest apparel of a Christian woman is to be not only in the things she wears, but in her conduct. And this is going to become important in a moment. A lot of women come to me and say, well, it's speaking here about braided hair. So I'm being modest if my hair is exposed, but it's not braided. And I, I do see how people get confused about this, but verily, we need to hold ourselves to some principles here. The other day I ran into a woman who had very long blonde hair that was not curled, it was not braided, it was cut straight at the bottom. And according to some religious people, such as the, the UPCI, the Pentecostal Church, her hair is her covering. And yet her hair, it in the sun, it looked like it was made of spun gold. It was very healthy hair, and it shimmered. And as she walked and talked, it, it glinted in the sunlight. It was extremely beautiful and captivating. And I'm not a man, and I'm not a, a, a fallen angel either. You see, when a woman has her hair exposed, it's not modest. Your beautiful hair was given to you for your husband. It's your glory, and your glory was given to you to be beautiful for your husband. So when a woman has very long hair, and it's it's lovely, it's it, whatever color it happens to be, in this case it was you know, very light blonde hair, it doesn't matter if it's braided or not. It's not modest to be uncovered and to be doing things like talking about the scripture or praying. All Christians are commanded to pray or pray, to be instant in prayer. And again, I have many videos about this topic, but I wanted to address the braided hair issue in this video because it's a common question that comes up. When we are adorning ourselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness, what does that mean? It means that we conduct ourselves in holiness. Another question that came up was when the woman who, who commented about this raised the issue of, well, a woman's eyes are beautiful and, and, you know, women bat their eyelashes. Does that mean we have to cover our eyes? And the thing is, is that shamefacedness and sobriety are part of modest apparel. So obviously a Christian woman is not going to be going around batting her eyelashes at people like a prostitute. She's not going to be wearing shoes that prostitutes wear. And I know that these days people have been taught that to wear high heels is to be dressed up. We need to address this. High heels were made so that women would be more sexually appealing. The way a high heel throws the body out of alignment is to make a woman's derriere more pronounced and it also enhances the shape of her legs. So women who are wearing clothing that exposes part of their legs, which a Christian woman doesn't do, when they're wearing clothing that exposes part of their legs, say they're wearing a skirt that is down just below the knee, and they're wearing high heels that will enhance the shape of her calf and make her more sexually appealing. It will also make her derriere or her hind end stand out more. It will also make her wiggle when she walks. Now, obviously, these are all things that a Christian woman would not want to do because she doesn't want to draw attention to her flesh. In the video that I made for another Christian sister, I likened wearing a veil that partially reveals your hair unto wearing a strappy high-heeled sandal. And I said in that video that I'm not saying that a Christian woman can wear an never, pardon me, that a Christian woman can never wear a sandal. And this is clear and obvious to me that there's a world of difference between the kind of high heel that many women wear these days that is definitely not modest and a sandal that is practical when you're living in a hot climate and is modest. So yes, a woman's foot is beautiful 
And if you put on what a prostitute wears on that foot, it will make her foot especially sexually appealing. If you take that same beautiful foot and put that foot in a Birkenstock, for example, or just a flip-flop, that does not enhance the beauty of a woman's foot. Then a woman's foot is being used as it is meant to be for things like walking, and the shoe is there to protect her from stepping on stones. The illusion that I made that, that when a woman is wearing a high-heeled prostitute's shoe, that this is uh, technically a shoe. The reason I use that example is that a shoe is worn to protect the foot from stepping on things that are painful and, and, and dangerous, so we don't step on glass. A high-heeled prostitute's shoe, like a strappy sandal, or um, there's other kinds of sandals that are, even if they don't have a high heel, are not modest. I think they're called something like uh, gladiator sandals. So they have straps around the ankle that allude to bondage. And for that reason, they're very sexual as well. So we, as sisters, we want to use discretion. Just because something is pertains to a woman doesn't mean that a Christian woman wears these things. But we also don't wear shoes that pertain to a man. So we don't wear work boots that are the same thing that men who are out working on the roads and bridges wear. We don't wear boots that pertain to a man. A Christian woman can wear warm and, and practical boots that are made for a woman. And the kind of discretion that it takes to tell the difference could be understood this way. If a man could put it on and not be ridiculed and mocked by the guys down at the bar, then chances are a Christian woman should not be wearing it. If a woman put something on her foot that would cause her to get cat calls and, and, and whistles from the men down at the bar, chances are she should not put it on. So I hope I have clarified the matter, the, the matter about a woman's shoe. The, the woman's foot is beautiful. That doesn't mean she has to hide them. It means she doesn't enhance them. She doesn't put things on her feet that make them sexually attractive, that make her wiggle when she walks, that exaggerate the shapeliness of her form. The same principle applies with a Christian woman's eyes. Yes, a, a woman's eyes are beautiful, and we don't use them to flirt. Rather, we use them to manifest the love of Jesus Christ. We want people to see the compassion of Jesus Christ in our eyes. And that is something that is a behavior. But again, let's read here. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. Well, shamefacedness is obviously not to bat one's eyelashes. And to be sober, to adorn yourself with sobriety is that your conduct, your conversation, and your attitude is one of humility and grace. That you're sober, you're recognizing that the reason you're in the world is to manifest the love of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ unto the world. So you're serious about that. So you don't go around batting your eyelashes and you don't wear shoes that pole dancers wear. You don't show cleavage and you don't show part of your hair. <clears throat> the final thing that this, this commenter brought up was that a woman's ha hands and arms can, can be beautiful as well. And what I would say is the same principle applies. Your hands, when they are diligently doing good things for people, when, when they are showing kindness unto people, when they're not adorned with all kinds of sparkly things or bracelets, that, then a woman's hands are not sexual in nature. Another way that women enhance their hands, so we're talking about what, how we adorn ourselves here in our conduct and what we put on. So we don't go down to the nail salon and spend 40 or $50 to have our 
false fingernails put on and painted in garish colors. That's what a prostitute does. And so a woman's hands, yes, are, are, are beautiful and lovely, but if we're not decorating them in that way, and we're not putting on all kinds of jewelry on them, then they will be used for the glory of God rather than for the glory of our flesh. You see a woman, her face is beautiful, her hands are beautiful, her feet are beautiful, and it's not a crime, it is not immodest for a woman's face to be exposed or her hands to be exposed or her feet to be exposed if she is not adorning them in such a way as to make them sexual. So when we put mascara on, when we have eyebrow threading done, or we have our eyelashes extended or dyed, when we color our eyelids, when we, we put a line around our eyes with, with eye makeup, when we put on different colors and, and tinctures onto our face and our lips to enhance the sexuality that, that is intended for our husband, and we go out in public like that, that is conducting our behavior and our manner, what we're putting on to ourselves, how we're adorning ourselves to make ourselves sexually appealing. And that is essentially the difference. A Christian woman in every single way that she dresses does so with a, an eye to, am I glorifying Jesus Christ? Am I covering myself modestly so that I will manifest the love of Jesus Christ? Or Am I covering myself in such a way as to draw attention to some part of my flesh, whether it be my ankles, my calves, my hind end, my, my eyes, my hands, my, my breasts, or my hair? You see, a Christian woman can be beautiful because it's impossible to hide a woman's beauty unless you put her in one of those things that some of the Muslims wear. We don't do that as Christian women because obviously part of modesty is about our conduct. So a woman's face should manifest the love of Jesus Christ and not seduction, not flirtatiousness, not emotional manipulation. She should conduct herself with shamefacedness and sobriety. I hope I've clarified these issues for you, the, the woman who asked and also for any of you who have also wondered about these things, we can recognize that, that a woman can wear pretty patterns. She can wear a dress that is pretty. She can wear sandals that are appropriate for a pretty dress when, for example, going to a church meeting. She doesn't want to wear flip-flops necessarily when she is gathering with people to, in a church meeting to worship God. She might wear a sandal that's a little bit nicer, but she would not wear high-heeled sandals that are meant for a pole dance, dancer or gladiator sandals. She wouldn't paint her toenails. She wouldn't wear an ankle bracelet. She wouldn't wear big earrings or, or some kind of sparkly thing around her neck in order to draw attention to her beauty. She wouldn't be wearing jewelry. She wouldn't be wearing costly array. She wouldn't be dressed in things that are shiny or woven with golden threads. You see the difference, my sister. We need to develop some discretion and understand that God made the woman beautiful for her husband and that her beauty is for her husband, her sexuality in particular. And Christian women, like all Christians, are ministers of Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. And so our conduct should be meek. It should be humble. It should be shy. It should be honest. It should be compassionate. It should be truthful. It should be speaking to people with love about the gospel. And if people are thinking about your, your, um, your hair or your cleavage or the sparkly thing on your hand or your gladiator sandals, Obviously, your, your conduct is attracting people to your sexuality rather than your conduct and your apparel calling attention to the fact that you are a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. A woman who covers her hair completely, does not wear men's apparel, dresses modestly, 
does not enhance her flesh in any way. When she's walking in the world, that alone is a testimony of what it means to be a Christian. I have many videos about this topic. Feel free to ask me if you have further questions. My email is always in the comment section below. And also feel free to comment if that's what you prefer. I remain here for you as your servant in Jesus Christ, you who are my sisters and those who are yet to become my sisters. I am here to help you. Please know that I am not here to contend and argue with people and people who want to mock or ridicule or be contentious or argue about what the Word of God says. It's better just to go somewhere else because you're not going to find an audience here. This is a Christian channel for people who love the Lord Jesus Christ and truly want to please him. And, and, and so please, just don't waste your time because your comment will not be posted. May the word of God go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.